Let's talk about Chris Jones being spotted at Arrowhead over the weekend, Rasheed Rice looking nice and healthy in recent training footage, Fluoride Florio doubling down on the Chiefs being con artists regarding Mahomes' contract, as well as Travis Kelsey being confronted for running soft and much freaking more. But first, how about those? First up, Chiefs linebacker Drew Tranquil caught a W over the weekend in a celebrity chess tournament, beating out Bengals cornerback Chidobe. I don't know his first name, but his last name, I believe, is Awuzie in the championship round, winning the first match with the next two, resulting in a draw giving Tranquil enough points to catch the dub and take home $25,000 for charity. He even added the title chess champion to his Twitter bio for good measure, so congrats to him. And speaking of charity, Patrick Mahomes, along with his foundation, 15 and the Mahomies, had their third annual Aloha Golf Classic over the weekend in Hawaii, and it looked like a ton of fun with Travis Kelsey, Rob Riggle, Alex Smith, Patrick Mahomes, obviously, as well as many others coming out to golf, take in the views, and help be a part of raising money for charity and believe it or not the winning team was the 2023 aloha golf classic champions who shot 61 now uh, we have mark hall mike trenton josh campbell alice miller and patrick mahomes the second the second get pat mahomes out of there second <laughs> So once again, Mahomes walks away with another W and I like the little jab at his dad. That was kind of funny. And we'll hopefully get another W this Thursday when he and Travis Kelsey face off against Steph Curry and Klay Thompson during Capital One's The Match on TNT. It's sometime in the evening. So if you're free on Thursday, make sure to check it out. Hashtag not sponsored. And then it looks like congratulations are in order for the Chiefs head athletic trainer and VP of sports medicine and performance, Rick Burkholder on his induction into the National Athletic Trainers Association Hall of Fame. A lot of syllables. He's been with the Chiefs for the last 10 seasons, is one of the top trainers in the NFL, and has served as the team's VP of Sports Medicine and Performance since 2018, overseeing both the team's strength and conditioning and equipment departments. And despite the NFL PA's recent report card of the Chiefs ranking Kansas City's training staff one of the lowest in the league, with several players mentioning Rick Burkholder by name as a reason for the environment not seeming to be welcoming among others, he seems to be well beloved by other players and all around the league, as well as the Chiefs staff. So congrats to Rick Burkholder on getting another ring shortly after he got his Super Bowl 57 Super Bowl ring. Next up, defensive tackle Chris Jones could be seen at Arrowhead over the weekend, simply posting this short video on his Instagram stories, tagging the Chiefs and saying, we out here, AKA we out here, AKA Hey Chiefs, I'm here. And the only reason I felt the need to elaborate on that is because many seemed to be confused on what the heck Chris Jones meant when he said that on social media. Some thinking he said he was out of here or goodbye. But honestly, I interpreted the exact opposite. And hopefully the reason for him being in town was to sign his contract extension, please and thank you, and to prove he was for sure out there at the time he posted his IG story, Chris could be spotted taking photos with some fans at KC's Barbecue Fest that was held at Arrowhead over the weekend, as well as doing something at BMW of Columbia, Missouri, taking a photo with the owner and president, Rusty Drewing, and doing something uh, Chiefs related because KC Wolf was out there with him as well, so maybe he was really just out there to do some endorsement with this company and stopped by Arrowhead simply to say hello because he was in town, but I hope it was really to sign his contract extension. Fingers crossed. And speaking of fingers crossed, I am also hoping for wide receiver Rasheed Rice to potentially be one of only like five other rookie wide receivers to go for over 500 yards in their rookie season during Andy Reid's tenure as head coach. That's both with the Chiefs and the Eagles. And while I have no idea if this will actually happen due to all the variables in the room at the moment, such as can Tony stay healthy? Will Sky take a huge sophomore leap? Is Richie James gonna work his way quickly up the depth chart? Among other questions. But regardless, Rasheed Rice was seen in some recent training footage and he does does look quick and rather healthy, which is great news because, in case you forgot, Rasheed Rice didn't play in the New Mexico Bowl last year because it was reported that he played through a broken toe. Some said turf toe, maybe it's one and the same, I'm no doctor, since September 24th and wanted time to heal before the Senior Bowl. And he could even be spotted at times limping back to the huddle and was visibly in pain on and off throughout the season. But in spite of that, Rice still had over 1,300 receiving yards and 10 touchdowns, catching more 20 plus yard passes than any other receiver in this draft class with 18 receptions of at least 20 yards. And he also placed first with eight contested catches on deep passes. So while he was hindered a bit due to injury, he's still balled out. And now that he's healthy, I think the best is yet to come for Rasheed Rice. The question is, 
Will he break that 500-yard mark that so few rookies in Andy Reid's tenure have ever been able to accomplish? Let me know in the comments down below. And then I found this article of the commander's new offensive coordinator, Eric Bieniemy, to be pretty hilarious to me because EB is basically yelling at everybody, which is 1,000% on brand for him. The article says, quote, it could be about route depths, talking about EB yelling at people. It could also be about the speed of getting in and out of the huddle or someone jogging instead of sprinting off the field. Bienemy even ordered the first group offense off the field after projected starting quarterback Sam Howell dropped the shotgun pass. EB said, give me the twos, we're gonna do it right. And the article goes on to say it didn't matter if it was a starter such as Dotson or someone who might not even make the roster. If they didn't run the right play, they would be chastised. Bienemy got on receiver Kyrick McGowan during one practice for the depth of one route and he made him run it again. For context, McGowan played 10 snaps on offense last season. Another time, he was chastising a backup center in rookie minicamp. It went like that throughout the spring. And the article says Washington's players are getting used to being enemy style, but they also know the offense could use a good kick in the rear. However, Coach Rivera said players see the results from the yelling and don't take it personally. And it's also worth noting that the would also call himself out when he messed up, once pointing out on the sidelines how he sent in the wrong play. Quote, he's trying to set a very high standard, Sam Howell said. We're completely bought into what he's trying to do. And while I know Eric Bieniemy is no longer on the Chiefs and wish him the best in his new chapter with the Commanders, this article was too entertaining and funny to me not to share with you all because we know Eric Bieniemy um, is kind of a hard ass. And this is the stuff shady, very sensitive McCoy cried about every time someone brought up Eric Bieniemy's name. All right, next up, do you guys remember back at the beginning of May when Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk said that the Chiefs were criminally underpaying Patrick Mahomes and the entire team should be ashamed of them? themselves because of it. And shortly after that, Mahomes actually came out saying he's being paid plenty. He literally said, I'm set for life and that he values legacy and building a team around him over making more money. Not to mention, Mahomes made the most endorsement money last season, only behind Tom Brady. Uh, but a week or so after this, Florio came out and said that Mahomes will once again be the highest paid player in the league before the start of the season and actually recently doubled down on everything in a Q&A last week. Are you still confident that Mahomes contract situation will be remedied before the season. Look, I was told weeks ago that before the season begins, he will once again be the highest paid player in the NFL. And I know he said it's not about money, it's about championships and yada and yada. Well, and Florio goes on to say that when Mahomes got his deal done a few seasons ago, he was the highest paid player in the league by like 10 million per year. But fast forward to right now, and Mahomes is getting passed by players who are not even in his category of elite QB play, but is also getting passed up by good players like Lamar Jackson making 52 million per year, who only has one league MVP to his name in 2019 and that's it. And then he said Jalen Hurts is making around six million more per year than Mahomes and Pat just beat Hurts in the Super Bowl. And then Florio goes on to say, So I still think it's going to get remedied before the season starts. I think the Chiefs would love not to be able to do it. I think the Chiefs would love not to be able to do it. I think the Chiefs recognize at some point it just looks too bad on them and it looks bad on him. It makes him look like he is being taken advantage of. It makes him look like a sucker. He really just said, I think the Chiefs would love not to be able to pay him. What is Florio's problem with the Chiefs? He once again uh, goes on with this weird conspiratorial assumption that the Chiefs are intentionally trying to scam Mahomes out of getting more money, and then once again insults the intelligence of Patrick Mahomes himself, like Patrick Mahomes has no brain and is incapable of going to bat for himself. And then I guess that also means Patrick Mahomes' agent is intentionally screwing him over, not wanting him to get more money and not looking out for Patrick's best interest. You're out of your mind. What's your point? Look, if Mahomes once again becoming the highest paid player in the league before the start of the season is something that happens, it's not gonna be because the Chiefs are so embarrassed that they feel they have no choice but to offer him more money to prevent themselves from looking like con artists, no. Florio, it's gonna be because Mahomes and company feel the pay bump is appropriate given the rise of QB contracts in recent years, and the Chiefs will wanna keep Mahomes happy for years to come. You see, Mike, there's not always this need to force an agenda while wearing cute little tinfoil hats, you weirdo. And by the way, it is totally fine. If Patrick Mahomes wants to get paid more, he deserves it. But the dramatization of Mike drank way too much fluoride Florio is embarrassing at best and comes off even more weird than the shoes. I mean, the crab rangoons that Stefan Diggs was seen wearing over the weekend. And here's why. Do you really think the Chiefs, his agent, and Mahomes himself are all surprised at the fact that QBs are now getting paid more money than they were three years ago? The answer is in Oh, Mahomes and his representation are in constant contact with the team, and when the time comes to adjust his deal, guess what, Mike? 
It'll happen. Could it be before the season? Sure, but could it also be in a year or more if Mahomes is still fine with what he's currently making and says, no, let's hold off for now? Sure. Either way, Mahomes deserves whatever he wants and then some for all he's done for the franchise since being drafted in 2017. But enough of this nonsense as we've honestly got more nonsense to cover about Travis Kelsey because did you guys know that he runs soft? Where Billy football has been on my ass. Uh, yeah, we're going to get to that. I mean, at least according to Billy Hot Takes or whatever his name is of the Pardon My Take podcast, that is exactly what Travis Kelsey does. Do you this. think Travis Kelsey runs soft? <laughs> <laughs> and his biggest critique about Kelsey is that instead of taking hit after hit, fighting for those extra couple of yards, he sometimes goes down or out of bounds to live to fight another day. So you agree he's making a lot of business decisions while running? Just like his mentality when he runs. <laughs> Look, Travis literally led the league in yak, so I can't. He's fantastic yeah. at it. But hey, Travis, this is Billy. He thinks that you run very soft. Yeah. Billy finally got his chance to confront Travis Kelsey personally about running soft in their recent podcast episode featuring Travis, and it was pretty entertaining to say the least. I'll own up to it. I'll own up to it. I'm owning up to it. I I have been a bit of a critic. A uh, huge fan of your route running. No, 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 no. This is still truth. Okay. I just think you could be a little more. F and congratulations on leading. <laughs> <laughs> and Billy couldn't even get to the critique. He's lathering it on with compliments, afraid to even really give this man the critique he had no problem saying when Kelsey wasn't around. Congratulations on leading the league in yards after the catch. But just, you could end a couple of those, like run someone over. You could run a little more physical. He's, I think it's because you can, but you don't. Yeah, no, I hear you. I'm my own worst critic, so I'll admit to it. There are times <laughs> at that, but there's times where I stick my f***ing face in the fan. You can't say it's every time. Yeah. yeah, but like, can you just like run someone over? Like, And when all is said and done, much like Twitter or any other social media app, the troll is actually pretty logical in person and will ultimately be kind, respectful, and possibly like this particular example, end up apologizing. You know, look myself in the mirror, man. Yeah. I'm mad at Irrational. It. I'm so sorry that you have that somebody. <laughs> Why are you apologizing? He agreed with you. Listen, man, I am not offended by this. It was good off-season fun. Kelsey doesn't really run soft, and it was hilarious to see this man interact and confront Travis Kelsey about it all. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below. Does Kelsey run soft or nah. And with all that being said, that's all for today. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those?